Um, I dabble with Rogan. I actually, yeah. driving home from New York City last year, <coughs> I listened to Anthony Kiedis of the Chili Peppers Rogan episode. Oh, really? And I was a little, I was a little disappointed. They kind of stayed, they like, they stayed on food too much, a little too much. Yes. When I, I, I specifically do not listen to comedians or actors or singers because I'm not interested in that kind of stuff. So those conversations typically stay, you know, something a little bit more artistic. Right. When he has a scientist on, I'll listen to the entire podcast, all three hours. So I could, I know what you mean. I, right. I don't like when they just, they get, sometimes you have to remember, they're just normal people having a conversation. So they got caught up in talking about right. food and stuff like oh, that. Oh, without a doubt. My mom always reminds me, we all put our pants on the same way. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I'm just 0% shy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think that's why you and I is, have always hit it off. Oh, yeah. So I cut the lawn before I got here. And I was like, how do I break the ice with Steve? Yeah. And it came to me after, like, after mulching the second bag. <laughs> I'm empty in it. Like, I knew it. So you did construction yes. in my house. Yes. What are we, three years ago now? Yeah. About three years ago. Yeah. And at the time, Brittany was still on earth with us. Yes. Brittany told me this after, like, your third time coming over. She goes, I cannot stand when you and Steve first see each other for the day. And I'm like, what? No, no, no. Yeah, tell, me, tell me more on this. Why? All right. So she said, like, you never can just be like, hey, what's going on? Good <laughs> to see you. It, it would be, it'd be compliment. Going, yeah. It'd be bro or dude. <laughs> Or it'd be like, hey, man, you look beautiful. <laughs> it's never it's never a normal. And you started this before the podcast, and I cut you off. I'm like, no, we're going into yes, this. Yes, yes. You're like, Mark, your eyes, real nice brown. Yes, they are. Because I was worried this is going to be videoed, and yep. I'm like, I, I don't know how I look. I want to talk about that as well. Yes. So in in Brittany's fashion, she, she would, like, impersonate us the best she could. Yeah. And her, like, masculine... <laughs> She's trying to be me. Hey, well, me would be, hey, dude, hey, bro, what's up? And we'd like slap, hug. Yep. And then uh, Brittany being, you know, the spreadsheet organized queen of like, no, we need to like talk molding and, and yes. tile here. Yes. No. Nope. You and I were complimenting, complimenting each other nonstop. Yep. Touchy feely. Yep. How are you? You've been working out? No, you've been working. Yeah. We, we both could be working out, but we're not acknowledging that. Yep. And then after like 10 minutes, uh, she'd come in. Me and Sean are yeah. very much the same. Yeah. Like, I, I, I love it because I think of myself as a manly man. I, I do. Like, I hunt. I'm a carpenter. You know, like, but I love my, I don't want to call it my feminine side because it's, it's not a feminine thing. I just enjoy being complimented. I enjoy complimenting others. I enjoy feeling emotions. Without and I think, I think it's like, like the picture of a man is a very stoic type person who doesn't have emotions because you're a man, you're tough. I, I'm tough. I'm a man. But I love, like, when you look good, dude, I want to tell I, you, bro, I, I, you look good. Thank you. you look, and and you we're dressed. doing it. We're yeah, doing it now. <laughs> you look good. Thank you. you. I told you at Brittany's Wake, yeah. I think the first thing I said to you is like, what did you cut? 20 pounds? Yes. We did it. And she was there with us. Yes, she was. And she's here right now <laughs> yeah. hearing this. Yes. Dude, I got all kinds of things I want to talk about with that. Yes. Like energies. Cause that's it's a I think a big part of the reason me and you and Britt always got along so well was I like when you invited me over for breakfast and like we just sat there and we talked about the universe and energies. Yes. I'm like, these are my people. We went into I remember the conversation about the secret, the yeah. early two thousand yes. book and then documentary and it's like the tldr the too long didn't read version of the secret is like when you put out in the universe what you want to attract yes and you act that way yes it's it just goes down i'm so glad you brought this up this up because i've been waiting for a guest to bring this up there's so many people who call it like oh that's hooey fooey you know there's no science behind it that's all fake blah 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 it doesn't matter I think there is a science. See, I try to see it from both perspectives. I think there is some scientific background to it, right? I think, and me and Sean have talked about this, that we're all, everything is vibration. That's an Einstein thing, right? Can we look that up? Oh, I messed that up. That's it for sure, right? Everything's vibrating. This table's vibrating. Everything, when you get down to the molecular level, is a vibration. The atoms vibrate or whatever. 
So it makes sense. If I'm a very positive, happy, outgoing person, I, I feel like I'm vibing. I feel high energy. I feel excited. That is definitely putting something into the, what do you, the ether, mm. the, like this, the space. Yes. Because if everything's vibrating, there's no way that my vibration is not affecting those vibrations somehow. And I don't want to, I think that the hooey fooey part of it is like, I'm going to manifest a car. I'm going to vibrate. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to get to an energy level where I'm going to get myself a car. That doesn't, I don't think that happens, but I think if you truly believe that somehow you're, you're going to get the car of your dreams, you're going to attract work that can get you the money to get the car. You're going to attract a salesman that becomes your friend that can help you get that car. Like that's the, that's the push and pull of the energy. Without a doubt. You know what I mean? What, what do the kids say? Say less. That's, that's the phrase. Is yeah, it? Say less. Oh, yeah. And I thought like when I first learned I'm what that hip. phrase meant. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm no, like, I thought that meant like, I thought, I thought that meant like, oh, okay, I'll shut up. No, it's like I'm 10 I agree million with percent uh, agreeing with what I you're see. saying. My, um, what do I call it? What do they call it? Uh, cringe. Oh, I, yeah. So video cameraing ourselves. Yeah. My first ever, when I put out the video about inviting people onto the podcast, I watched that video like 25 times and just would like watch it and be like, man, you have the worst voice ever. You are so stupid. Do you think people are going to notice that like your left eye is twitching? Like, and then I kept on saying to myself, just cringe, cringe. Yeah. And that's like young people talk like, oh, that's cringe. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm super stoked for you and proud for you. This Thank is you. huge. And Thank we're kind of... The timing of it all. Yes. So my wife passed from stage four metastatic melanoma. Crazy. February 4th of 2023. Yeah. And instantly I knew I had to hit the ground, the ground running. Alfred State style here. <laughs> of uh, Brittany was buried on a Friday. That Monday I was already rejoined a gym in the gym. Yeah. And I was like, I need to physically get up. I need to do something. Yes. Um, I feel like that's a little bit of Brit in you. Yes. Because she, she was such an organized, direct, like she got crap done. And I know, and this is just from my perspective, like I know, <laughs> obviously she passed, so she can't tell you this, but like if it was a situation where you were dealing with those emotions, she'd be like, Mark, you can't dwell. Like Correct. you got to get your shit together. Like, and I could see that in you. You know what I mean? I've been wanting to talk to you about this because right. I oh, can yes. almost see her yeah. coaching you in this, well, and this almost stuff through like this. We, and this is like stuff we worked on. Like we, yeah, well, oh, it was a, we, own it was a holi- while. we own a holistic shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when, when she was diagnosed with the stage four cancer at Roswell yeah. by like a resident who I don't think ever told a human this. Yeah. It was just, uh, he was like facing a computer. Bedside manner. And it's like, <sighs> and I don't hold it against him. Like I couldn't imagine doing that, but her response to the resident and the head oncologist was, well, what are we going to do? Because I can walk out of this building and get hit by a bus. Right. I'm like, Brittany mess. God damn. And what a perspective that never stopped us. Like we were given this news. I'm like, all right, for me as a caretaker, I need to turn up my therapy. Yeah. And so they told my therapist. Yeah. Turned to sessions. I was, I was like, maybe, bi-weekly appointments i'm like mm, maybe weekly for a while yeah, oh my God. until we're gonna check in more um and it didn't stop us we we bought a small business that's when yeah. we started so Brittany became a reiki master yeah you know with this di- diagnosis yep. i was following yeah. the social media journey yeah. for all, all this. of it yeah. and we like we completely changed our diets yeah and i definitely had a dairy and sugar addiction well i remember when i was doing your bathroom you were doing what was the thirty day thing called? It's oh, not like a thirty um, day challenge, but you were trying the whole to whole thirty. Yes, yes, yes. I highly recommend it to people. I think it's incredible. Yeah. But when you quit sugar, oh, it's you, for me at least. I had like the flu. We were shopping at Wegmans. It was like day four, and I just started pouring sweat. Uh-huh. Middle of winter, just sick out of my mind. This was our last podcast. Uh, with Matt, I call, I call all addiction addiction, and I think food's one of them. I think I think food is one of the most socially acceptable, not realized addictions we have. Absolutely, and I think sugar is the part of food that makes it so addictive. Right, like after a meal, I had to have a dessert. Yes, always. Yes. Doesn't matter how much I ate. 
Yeah. I need a dessert. I need something sweet. I know. And we we always tinkered with like different diets, things like that. Yeah. When Brittany got this diagnosis of the melanoma stage four, she almost immediately went vegan. And this is someone who always ate pretty healthy to begin with, like yeah. favorite meals, salad. Yeah. And like I used to always make a sick joke, like, you know, kale. But like I'd rather kale myself than eat a salad. <laughs> so she immediately went. I started cleaning up a little bit. Yeah. And then a year after she was on it, like we're hitting the new year, I was like, I'm joining you. Yeah. And I'm someone that like cheesecake was my patronus. Like I give me the cheese, give me, give me trash peanut Dude. butter on the cheesecake, frozen pizza. Lemon cheesecake is my favorite dessert. By far. It's incredible. But a I little can, bit I, of lemon, lemon yeah. zest in it because it's cheesecake's already de- fucking delicious. But then there's like that little bit of lemon zest to it. Yeah. Oh, and my wife knows this. She buys it. Thanks, honey. She buys it from the most specific spot. Out. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite, my favorite part of this. Yeah. And we didn't talk about the fear of videoing, but c- continue about the yeah. diet. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. I like that. Add I, in there. This is this. We're all, all, this you, and I, you and I always compliment each other, but we always get back to that yes, main we road. Do. Well, this, is, this is the podcast. This is. My, everybody comes in a little bit nervous, even myself, yeah. for every new guest. And it's like, is there going to be dead time? Is there going to be quiet? And never. Because it's just tangent off the tangent. And then you can get back to the main conversation. Right. And then tangent, 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 back to the main conversation. I didn't come in nervous. You, you, Sean, and I, we held hands. Oh, I mean, we did a big group hug as soon as you walked in the door. There, there was grounding happening. Yeah. Do you, you want to do it again? Yes. Yes, yes I do. Oh. I love okay, let me get my feet flat on the ground. Oh, okay. I ground all the time. With uh, no yeah. shoes and like actual earth? Yes. Yeah, me too. I try to when I wake up. Yep. I want natural sunlight to be the first thing to hit me. And, and I'm guilty. Like blue light. Yeah. Blue light can rule our lives. Oh. You got to turn the alarm off or you got to check that email. Yeah. Let me get back to it. Diet wise, <laughs> I am. I'm joining in. And I would always quote Pulp Fiction with Samuel Jackson character. Yeah. He's he bites the big kahuna burger. Yeah. And he goes, My girlfriend's uh does he say vegetarian or vegan? So that basically makes me. So that's how I always explained it. Like, I'm gonna try this. Yes. I wanna I want to not only support Brittany, 100%. who never asked for it. Yeah. Ever. Especially food wise, but yeah. also better myself. I feel like that's things uh, me and my wife do a we're trying to eat better. We're doing all the same things. Yeah. It's so crazy. There, there is a trend of people getting healthy. All the things you were just saying, like the blue light, sunlight, grounding, yes. it's all stuff that I think about and do. I just, now I'm talking about it more because of this. But similarly, we were like, when she does something, I do something. Yes. You know what I mean? So there's so, that. And then you got a little sample of that. Yes. Coming to the Mez Mansion. Yeah, yes, says, yes. So every morning. You guys were our, like, our role models. For, yeah, a lot of <laughs> oh, stuff. stop. Yeah, I'm serious. Stop. We're back to our introductions again. <laughs> so no, it's it's literally like, and even after Brittany passed going on four months now, yeah. I'm, I'm still pretty much still eating. I, I'm oval pescatarian. Okay. Not to be confused with presbyterian. A lot of people think of that. <laughs> I was just going to say, Presca- you got to break this down. Presbyterian, not presbyterian. <laughs> one's a food, one's, one's religion. A, yeah, I was going to say. So I know the religion. It's, it's basically you're vegan, but you eat seafood. Oh. But oval is eggs. I cannot quit eggs. I love eggs. Bro, I got chickens that I eat their eggs the day they hatch them. Like, I, not hatch them, lay them. Let me buy some of those or I'll accept them the as a it. gift. I just, I'll just, I should, you know what I should do as part of this? I have 30 chickens now. I eight, should just bring a dozen for every guest. <laughs> just give them away. <laughs> I have an, an egg addiction. Egg and mayonnaise. It's, say it, egg. 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 Tomato, tomato. Egg. Egg. I like that idea because I'll get eggs You'll every time. You'll get some? <laughs> <laughs> I have so many. I, so many eggs. I'm always told I say library wrong. Li- it? Is it library? Library? Library. A librarian? Library. Those are the words. I just don't, you don't think about it when you're saying it. I just, library. Library. I don't know. It comes out muddled. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're you doing oval? I'm eating eggs. Okay. But I avoid dairy, okay. avoid red meat, pork, poultry. And this is, is this based off of studies and like education or is this based off of your, your 30? Both. Okay. It's, it's a lot because I just feel great. I'm 36. Yeah. This is the best I ever felt. Really? It's the strongest I've ever been in the gym. Really? Um, I used to have massive knee problems okay like was it inflammation i don't know 
start Googling it. Yeah. Oh, we get some turmeric supplements. Mm -hmm. And then I, dairy's my killer. Dairy's okay. always my to killer. Say about that. So I think dairy gets a bad rap because of what dairy has become. When you homogenize and pasteurize this, I actually know a local farmer that lives near me. We've talked in depth about this. <clears throat> Raw milk, when you get it out of the cow, is probably one of the healthiest things you could drink. When you homogenize it and pasteurize it, and you could verify me because I'm probably messing this up. <clears throat> what I think happens is there's lactose and lactase, okay? They're supposed to cancel each other out when you drink it. The reason that milk bothers so many people and you hear about lactose intolerant, when you homogenize and pasteurize milk, which I'm pretty sure is boiling the milk, uh, or it's a version of getting rid of the bacteria in the milk, which is good for you. But when you're mass producing it, you have to make stuff as uh, safe as possible for everybody. So I understand why you homogenize and pasteurize things. But I think that the reason that milk bothers people like you and a lot of lactose intolerant people is because there's no lactase in it. And that comes out during the homogenization process, process and pasteurization process. Because I have a goat now mm. that I milk and I drink that milk raw. Really? And I, I used to be pretty lactose intolerant. And then I, I don't know if I grew out of it. It just never really seemed to bother me anymore. But I don't feel a thing when I drink the goat milk. Have you ever uh, watched on Instagram Carnivore MD? Uh, from Joe Rogan. I haven't watched. I, I, yeah. I, I follow him, so I get his clips. He, he pushes. Yes. Raw goat milk. milk a lot. Oh, and really? I'll follow, like, I, I like to follow even people that I don't live their lifestyle whatsoever. Yeah. Liver King. Yeah. Carnivore uh, MD. I'm the most bring, opposite don't there don't is from don't them. Liver King. Man, he's a disgrace. He's... <laughs> But I'll follow it all. I yeah. want to know. Yeah. I want and I want to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I watch I, it. I take it in. And at the end of the day, there's there's a joke. It's like, how do you know when someone's vegan? They tell you. <laughs> like I don't wear that. I don't wear that as a badge. Just I don't identify yeah. as a vegan. Yeah. Um, I'm wearing my right. Hang on, do that high kick. You could probably I get still got a high kick in me. There's my ah. there's my my leather fries. Yeah. Like yes, there is an animal abuse problem, especially with food in America. Yep. I'm not going to sit here and not acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah, like I can hear you. poultry farms, yeah. all that. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, it's terrible. So, so, but I just do it because I just feel better. Yes, and this is what I've been doing, and I don't, I don't like if I fall off a little bit down the road or I change. That's okay too. Yes, it is. I already know. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm, okay. I'm ray rolling you. It's, it's okay. I'm, I, there's just so many good things I, I want to say. So keep right. talking. You're but right. if I travel, I have a strict rule. Like if I leave America, I'm eating it all. There is no rule. Oh, why wouldn't you? How Robert? do you say Pepto Bismol in French? <laughs> I don't I'm think. Not, I'm not going to go and be like, oh, yeah, can I get uh, that in plant based? No. no. You, don't give you this see to the me. videos, though, of people who travel and they're like, yeah, I eat junk food and I'm fine. Right. It's America. It's an America thing. And again, I go down the rabbit hole on this. Do you know what GMO? Yes. Do you know why GMO is bad? Tell okay. me. Inform, so, inform me, I podcast will. I daddy. Will. <laughs> Tell me. This is the Look best. me deep in my brown eyes. Yeah, they are really, yeah. really brown though. We can mm -hmm. edit them too. <laughs> Did they get bit. more brown? Yeah. Filters. GMO, genetically modified organics. GMO, can you look up what GMO actually stands for? So genetically modified, do you know why? So I think people don't really understand why they genetically modify stuff. And I, I might even be wrong, I think, but I think the general reason they genetically modify things is when they spread, so when they plant all the crops, they're in nature, they're out in big fields. The farmer doesn't want weeds to grow up in the fields. He just, he only, excuse me, wants what he planted to grow. So the genetic, genetically modified plants are Roundup resistant. Roundup is glyphosate. That's the poison that is they're finding is in everything now because farmers have used it for years and years and years to make sure that they got no other weeds that grow, just the stuff that they grow. When they genetically modify the plant, it's Roundup resistant. Okay, so when you see GM made with GMO foods, that more than likely means they sprayed that with glyphosate. And that's what's killing people. That's what's bad for us. Because think about it. It's a chemical that kills other plants. So if it's a chemical that can kill other plants, what do you think it's doing to you? Right. And the only reason that that plant is not dying is because it's a GMO plant. So it was modified genetically to be resistant to the the, the glyphosate. There's a, there's a list I save of like if you're gonna if like you're limited to what you have to buy organic wise. Yeah. It's it's like I know peppers are a huge one. I eat tons of peppers. Yeah. Things like that. I try to be mindful with it. Yeah. And then sadly, you got to be mindful 
of your checking account because I know. it seems the more route you want to go eating, you know, clean. GMO. Genetically modified organism. Organism. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. What a great use of O. Mm. <laughs> and also, without Amanda here, I can't figure out how it's moving in on the phone camera. I can trust it sometimes. That's why I've been like, okay, you know, like, your hand can sit in the shot like this and it's like, really? That way oh, yeah, bit. I can. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. How do I look in this camera? Handsome. Like I said, <laughs> this is this is us three amigos right here the nicest guys i know we love each other yeah, we gonna, are super nice i'm gonna give you a 11 out of 10 on a yelp review oh, of looks um oh, i i appreciate you saying that um another thing cutting the lawn today remember when i literally ate your homework I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Intro to keyboard, keyboard high school. What? You were going to hand in a sheet or something. I grabbed it and just bit it. Come on. That yes. Was, that was like early in our friendship, too. That like, was it early. It like, might have been the first time. Like, but that's, but that's <laughs> Mark. That's me, do I mark my... He, he is a, such a... You are such a unique person. That is how your early friendship with somebody would go on. It's, yeah. It, it was, the, was the homework organic? <laughs> it was definitely GMO. Yeah. <laughs> Ate some organisms. No, you... So on the looks topic, one thing I am jealous of you because you say I'm a good looking person. I think you are a great looking overall person because stop. You have style. I don't have style. Okay. It's I call it my gimmick. Your what? Gimmick. Why? It's all a gimmick. Okay, it's a great it's, gimmick. It though. Nice. You look right. You you have I, I couldn't pull that head off. You could. I could. You watch not. two seasons of Peaky Blinders. You're in. You're in for it. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I, I'm gonna try it. Doesn't mean I could pull it. By off. order of the Steve Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that comes out cool sounding. Yeah, we'll, By we'll order, we have like we have like the don't we yeah. have like all kinds of cool yeah, shit. We'll but get Sean doesn't one. know he's gonna hit we'll a bunch of there. random ones. Yeah, I don't know him yet. Right? Tell me what this one says. It's okay. just a cool piano intro. Is I like it? that. All right, what about this one? I horn, love air that. horn. I love it. No, just a one big no. horn. You need a headset, bro. I we need. Step up. We need. So I'm going? already inviting myself back. Yes, of course. And yeah. Sean's coming into it. We're we're going we're going three way. Okay. Yeah. He really he could be. So we've talked. To, okay. We'll bring you into the conversation. I. Sean doesn't know what his role should be. He's like, should I stay quiet? Should I talk? I, yeah. We we have such. I'm good, gonna play it by yeah, play it by ear. And I should look that up. Is it ear? Ear, play it by, play ear? by ear, like ear. Yeah, that's the saying, play it by ear. Yeah, but I don't know oh, which one it is. Dude, this is so I came in asking what a haiku is, and then, <laughs> no. then I, made the, I made the joke about yours, how many yours there are, and how many theirs there yes. are. I am, yeah. I am bad With at those. Sayings? Me too. I, I mess them up all the time. Nip it in the bud it. or butt. Oh, it's gotta I, be butt. I was I'm I, pretty sure it's bud. But you I'm could very sure ease, you could no. I'm not going to look it up. I'm going to leave that one in question. <laughs> yeah, because the, the shit that you'll pull up when you nip it in the butt. The I, said, I, I said the escaped computer. goat one time. <laughs> Scapegoat. Oh, that's it's bad. Bad. So I had a guy. I, I don't know if I could say this. We'll edit it out. I, think. I had a guy that used to work for me who would always say Pacific. But he was saying specific. And he said, okay. He was always saying Pacific. Right. That's so close. But I was saying play it by ear because some guests like you love it. Join yeah, the conversation. Of I course. love talking like how this kind of, I don't know if it's how it kind of started, but it kind of sparked with me is when you would just call me and yes. we'd talk for like an hour, half hour on the, the phone. The first and we'd podcast just talk about was whatever. me, you and Robbie. Yeah, yeah. And then the second one was me and you. Yeah. And then I was just like, I love this. I, yeah. yeah. I get a high off on. of, dude, this is my therapy. So you say you go to therapy and I do want to touch on that subject because I didn't realize I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Oh my God. I love hearing about people's uh, um, journeys with addiction and trauma. I think it's, I mean, we knew this. This is mental health, right? Hearing about others' journeys so you don't feel so alone. Mm. Hearing about their little, like, oh, my God, that person did that weird little thing. I thought I was the only person that did that. Because everybody knows that everybody has anxiety and depression. But then there's, like, the weird little thing that you do that you think nobody else does. And it makes you almost self-conscious about it. But then somebody talks about it, and they're right. like, oh, right. my God. And you feel so not alone. It's so when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with legitimate OCD and anxiety. Really? And so I, I saw my dad have a grand mal seizure in front of me when oh. I was in fourth grade. And he ended up being diagnosed with two inoperable brain tumors and they were brain cancerous. And he was about to get on his motorcycle. There were no signs. There was no like, oh, I'm getting these headaches or wow. just, just happened. 
I witnessed it trauma llama style mm. happened right in front of me. I can astro project back in time and yeah. be like standing in the kitchen, seeing it running out the garage. My mom was as a good Polish woman in Chikawaga. <laughs> she Setting was for flamingos. <laughs> she knows she was not yet. She was edging the sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, hey, yes. mom. Yes. So that's a making our, our home look beautiful. Yeah. And right away. Um, so my OCD came out as in germs as in and in numbers. So my dad had two brain tumors. So like things with two freaked me out. Really? Freaked me out. So that so you're saying that that specific event is what triggered that in you? Yes. No now shit. like now my my question is like was it there all along? Would yeah. would if something like that didn't take place? So again, I I refer to Joe Rogan a lot and I'm sorry to everybody, but I just listen to a lot of Joe Rogan. He brings on a lot of experts. It's not Joe Rogan, it's like the experts in the the conversations he has. It's just a lot of good information. There's people who smoke weed that will have schizophrenic breaks. Again, I'm just yeah. learning this information. I wonder if we all have something in us that it just <clears throat> it just takes a specific something to bring it out. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if we probably all have something in us deep down that could be exposed. You've heard just takes an event. like this kid's this far on the spectrum, or yes, yeah. Whatever. I think everybody is somewhere on that spectrum. Hundred percent. You know what I mean, it's just what, where do you fit in on that? What is well, your core? That was my thing on last podcast that we all have a little bit of addiction. I just think that obviously when you have an opioid addiction, that like that gets looked at like it's way worse. But I'm like, well, it's just because the effects of it are way worse. Like a food addiction is an addiction. A cell phone addiction is an addiction. A porn addiction is an addiction. It's just that the the consequences of those addictions are different than somebody on opiates where they overdose or they, you know, they're begging for money to get more drugs. Like people kind of look down on that more and they're like, that's a serious addiction. I'm like, yeah, but so is your cell phone, but right. nobody's yelling at you for looking at it 10,000 times say, a day. It's like a dopamine addiction. Yeah. Like I need to keep scrolling yeah. through TikTok, oh through Instagram. It just depends on what you seem to get addicted to. Yeah. Hey, so you brought up uh, just really quick. Cause a couple of things that you had me Google earlier. Yeah. <laughs> um, you referenced sugar and yeah, it, it, there is little withdrawal symptoms that you're going to have from quitting really? sugar, cold Turkey, yeah. headaches, anxiety, mood swings, everything. Just like it would be any drug, any drug. Yep. That's wild. Was there something else? You said multiple oh, things. Yeah. There was a couple other things. <laughs> what did you say? So Einstein's quote. You can leave your mic on bro. Cause uh, okay. you're in like, you're in this, this now. Is, right. Just like we were saying, this is, I think this is a podcast that deserves Three. Okay. You know we're vibing and thriving yeah. yes, now. Yes, we are. Dude, vibing. That's we what, here. That's what I was going to bring back Dude, up tell to. me you're not feeling a little bit like... I'm, I'm into this. Is this right? Um, did you see my posture change? I'm like, ready. <laughs> Put me in, coach. What else can we talk about? What else yeah. can we talk about? What rabbit holes can we go down? <laughs> so Einstein's quote was, everything in life is vibration. That's oh. directly from Thank you. Einstein. And, and what was the a, last one? It's a scientific thing. Like I said, down to the electrons. Like They're vibrating, right? Around the nucleus. Am I right, Sean? Electrons uh, yeah. around the nucleus. Yeah, nucleus of the atom. Atoms are always vibrating. Yeah. yeah, everything. All the all the small. Everything's vibrating. This table's vibrating. I'm vibrating. So My it's not foolish. Vibrating. So it's definitely not foolish to say that you could be so happy and so positive and think so hard that you emit a vibrational frequency that then attracts other positive vibrational frequencies. Without a doubt, there's no way somebody could just like say, "Nope, that doesn't. That's not true." You don't know. You're not a. I guess I'm not a scientist either, but. It makes me feel better. To we d- we just don't know. That's the thing. Yes. Well, th- good point. I don't like, I think there's a lot of people that because we don't know specifically, no, that can't happen. You're wrong. Just stop talking. Right. And it's like, that's a glass half full kind of perspective because not knowing means it could go either way. It could be true. It could not be true. I talked to you about this scientifically. Like he says, we know what is in the center of the earth. And I'm like, we think we know. We have science that tells us we think we know what's down there. And he's probably right. Science is probably accurate about what's down there. But we don't know. But we don't know. And we'll never know. And it's just like going back on it, like uh, the small business I have, we have crystals. You have to talk more about that because yes, I didn't even, I mean, I obviously conditions like the situation. Right. I didn't know much about it. And you're well, right there. Let me... Let me rewind though. So the OCD thing, like yeah, legitimate. Yes. And yeah. a lot of people be like, nope, I need this in order. I got OCD. And it's like, no, 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 no. Hold my beer. Let me tell you about OCD yes. and the intrusive thoughts you can get. And like, oh, if I don't do this, if I leave this down, it could kill my dad. Like that is OCD. 
to a, yes. That's crazy. So, and here I'm this little kid. I see my father given and, and told he has nine months to live oh. and I'm just imploding. Like, wh- what do I have to do? So I'm not the reason my dad dies. Oh, and these are thoughts I'm having in fourth grade when I should be thinking about like fourth grade crap. Yeah. yeah. And my parents, God bless them made sure I still had an you enjoyable, have, have amazing parents. childhood. Yeah, you great parents. And fast forward, my dad given nine, nine months to live, 25 years. Yeah, I know. He amazing. passed away last June, uh, June 12th, and he got to see my brother and I grow up yeah. and get married and yeah. just live our lives and become yeah. men. That's and, and I'm grateful for that. And I haven't, I haven't mourned my father. I don't know if I ever will. Yeah. And I know some people shared with me that they were really scared of what was going to happen when my dad died. And I with wasn't you? with you w- with me. And yeah. I wasn't that fourth grade OCD ridden kid anymore. I was, I was, I was grateful, but I also, on the other end of things, my wife was going through stage four melanoma. And the next day we were in the hospital because she had 140 degree fever, her, her fever, excuse me. She had hepatitis, medicine-induced hepatitis oh. from an immunotherapy she was on to battle the cancer. Oh. And I view like my dad's passing, like the timing of it was, was like, hey, Mark, I'm dying, but you're going to need bereavement time and take care of Brittany. Yeah. So it was just, it just, the next day we, we did what we had to do. Wow. And it was just my dad's birthday a few days ago. Yeah. He would have been 70. And so we, you know, we had some of his uh, favorite things, yeah. ice cream, Anderson's, which has plant-based. So I was yeah, still yeah, able, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to celebrate Pat Mez can, with my plant-based ice cream. Can I ask you something? Always. What? <laughs> I am as transparent as they come. You know I this. I know that. What are the emotions that you're feeling when you're thinking about this kind of stuff? When I, when I think about this stuff? Because I, I, from my perspective, I, I, don't, I don't really understand how a person can have this trauma mm. and those things trauma happen. llama. I know, but like yeah. you just handle it so well and some people don't handle it well. And it's just, I have my moments. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, just, I don't sit at home and you know, I, I have a few things to piggyback off that question. Yeah. Um, Brittany and I never viewed there being an end, no matter what when yeah. the doctors would say, Hey, maybe get some affairs in order or hey, this this is gonna be an unexplored medicine. And we're we were living in New York City uh the end of last year yeah. for a few months and I was coming back and forth a lot. It 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 was always like, hey, this clinical trial is gonna work. Hey, you're gonna be working full time at our small business, yeah. Brittany. Hey, Mark, you're gonna learn uh level one Reiki. Yeah. There was never, oh man, we, we gotta get our ducks in a row. Is it ducks in a row? Is that the animal? <laughs> it's definitely ducks in a row. That's Is it easy... goats? Do no, these that's goats that's easy... get in a row that's here? A, that's an easy one, ducks in a row. And I, and I love the thinking Brittany and I always had. Yeah. And that's something I always admired about us. Yeah. And I recommend to people. Yes. You never, never think of that. And at the end of the day, cancer didn't win. We're here. Us three are sitting. And yes. we're talking about this. Yes. And if someone listens to this, they yes. take away. And we're going to talk about that. I open book yeah, yeah. you know i, know if I gotta you. throw You're up the... a, if i gotta throw up a tea you tell me bro i'll tell you, you tell me yeah yeah and it's just if if you go on britney's social media she did these update videos i saw that's and i was just always so just in awe of those yeah what she's going through and she just was telling the world hey all this is what's going on yeah there was a gofundme for us there's all this love pouring in she's like they need to hear my voice they yes. need to have updates yes and i think now where I'm at in life, that had to be therapeutic for her also. Oh, hundred percent. And she would just put so much time into these videos and cuts and like. Was it hard for her to do the videos? It was. Was she like a, she like us like where she is like I, I don't enjoy f- screen time like I, I like I'm very self conscious. She she was very. Um, she had a vision like anything in her life. Yeah, she's so in the, driven. In the Britney Britney so vision, driven. and she would do multiple cuts in that, and she did these videos, and people at work or in life would see me oh i saw britney's video yeah, that was yeah, awesome yeah. like she did she did a video that she had chicken wings for the first time in like over three years oh. and people are like that that so video is because cool. awesome. that's us though we yeah. even with all this 
awful medical updates happening, we're still finding joy in life. Yeah. Joy is huge. You have days here. Right? Yes. You got to use them up. And I like that. Yeah, you got to. I like you that. Gotta. I'm quoting that. <laughs> so. Clip. <laughs> yeah. When, when, hit the horn on that one. Burr, burr. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I love know. it. I know. We need to get like maybe like a little, no, because then the speaker would mess up the sound. We just got to get you out. No, I got to get you Yeah, I got to get you out. So right away then, after, hang on, pause, rewind. Sorry, sorry. Yep. <laughs> we, Brittany used everything she had to get home from New York City. Yeah. And to be in our home. We yeah. love our home. Yeah. Thanks, Mez Steve. Mansion. Helping out with the Mez Mansion. Of course. Of course. And all, and all the other people out there, I don't want to. Well, of course. I'll get, some, angry, say, yeah. I'll get some angry texts no. real quick. <laughs> you know, it's, you're an ex-town worker. You know how we get. Oh, I know. People, Anyways, people want their uh, their 15 seconds of fame. No, there is just so much love from so many people. Oh. So. I have things that I could say about. Dude, you have so much love from so many people because you two gave out so much love to so many people people my brother said it best he said her wake was like a un meeting and i thought about that and i'm like oh my gosh it was just just so many different yeah. walks of life everyone just I, just like you had education from Brittany working teach for america Elmwood yeah. village charter school you had town employees for me mm -hmm. you had amazing police officers yeah. at, the, at the police station i'm assigned to yep. You had family. You had people from all over. Friends of every walk. I know. It was, it was amazing. I walked in there and I was a little not intimidated, but it's like, whoa. There's a yeah. lot of people there and a lot of different type of people. Yes. Yeah. It was, a, it was beautiful. Amazing. And yeah. I like, hang on. Anyways, the videos. I'm yes. going back to the main okay. road. This I'm is, taking the flashers this off. This is the podcast, yes. baby. I am. I'm going, baby. <laughs> I'm going down the main road here. I'm doing. I'm doing 50 miles per hour on a 35. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep it. Not bring it back. Bring all it gas, back. no brakes. Yeah, bring it back. So Brittany did these videos, and I thought about after she passed. I was like, what can I do? Because during hospice, she said to me. I'll never forget it. She's on the couch. It was one of our last conversations. She goes, you are going to do so much good. Those were her words. Oh. And I go, in Mark Mez fashion, Yeah. I go, hold that thought. <laughs> I stood up. I had oats on the stove. Got them. Threw in my organic, natural peanut butter. Mixed it. <laughs> ran back. Sat down next to her. And I'm like, tell me more. Oh. And I go, and I go, Britt, do you mean, do you mean like with the union, you know, the private union you used to be part of? I'm yeah. the chief union steward. Yeah. And I'm like, with the union? And she goes, eh, very animated. Eh, only if that makes you happy. She goes, Mark, I'm talking with mental health and I'm talking about life. Yeah. And in my opinion, she was also saying about being a 36 year old widower. Yeah. There's not a lot of us. No. There's not a lot of 36 year old male widow, widowers that I know of because I seek I seek that immediately through social media. Yeah. And there was these private groups that I actually think like people could take away a lot of good stuff from them. Yeah. I did not. It, it, I, I like the privacy. I actually had to like submit an obituary and wow. they fact checked it, which wow. I like that comfort. That's, yeah, it's That's, good for keeping out like idiots that would do stupid shit. Correct. Yeah. And I had. Uh, they picked a photo of mine to post, and it was Brittany and I in Santorini on our favorite vacation ever. Oh. And people were commenting, condolences. And one comment just said, you got screwed. And I just raged quit out of that group. Yeah. Like, unsubscribe. Faster than a junk email. <laughs> I, I actually then took the time. I emailed the admin. I go, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, there was a comment said to me. I don't want to get into it. It doesn't matter. I, I don't think this is for me. And then I tried some other groups. Can I ask you something, though? Yes. What, why? Can, I don't understand that, that upset you. Yeah. It, uh, it oddly did. Because I don't view that I got screwed whatsoever. And I didn't want to go into a thesis paper of how Brittany and I in our seven years of marriage have done so much and yeah, yeah, changed yeah. so much. And see, you're just a glass half full guy. Yeah. That's all you are. Yeah. Because I could see where he was coming from. I don't think that would have been an insult. It, it, at the time it bothered me. And now sitting here and kind of like flushing it out with you. Yeah. I don't think I would unsubscribe. Yeah. Can I, cause from my perspective, him saying that is almost, 
not a compliment. I think he was saying that you guys had such a great relationship and you had such a right. beautiful marriage that like that she's passed onto a different life that she's not here with you anymore. You guys right. screwed me. That, you know, but that's I how I would But I didn't it. know him. Oh, okay. And someone came up to me at the wake and I'm not going to say their name, but yeah. I, I called them like a week later. And he said, Mark, I'm looking at all the photos of what you guys did and just knowing you and this and that. Yeah. You have done more than people do in 30 years of Hunter, marriage. I think that. about it. I thought that while she was alive, I thought you right. guys had... Me and my wife have talked about, you know, because of the situation. You guys had a love that was just undeniable, man. Like, you you just really seemed in love. That's all. No. Like, I, is it, I don't want to get sappy about it or too down the rabbit hole about it, but just I never once doubted how much you guys loved each other. Yeah. Like you guys said, and all the trips he took, and like I, it makes me, you know, just like you, you just. It was great, you know. I appreciate, it was beautiful. I appreciate you sharing. It that. was really beautiful. And, yeah, and you, I'm just. Yeah, she was like my skeleton key, and I am. Yeah. And I, I, bro- I just broke this down with my therapist. Um, there's like, pre Mark Maz of marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there's married Mark Maz, and now here's the like third scoop scoop of this like Neapolitan Mark Maz, and yeah. like here we are. Yeah. And I'm just very grateful. Yes. I'm I. I love life. I can sit here and say I love life and there's just so much good and there's yes. so much good people and yes. things. And I also, so a little back to it, yep. Brittany's videos, I was like, and she's telling me I'm going to do so much good. What am I going to do with this mental health? What am I going to do with this like, oh, this dude looks like a hipster. He's cool, but he's <laughs> not scared to say, hey man, talk to your therapist. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. Hey, come meditate with me. Yes. Let's go ground together. Drink our warm lemon water with Himalayan salt added. And I just, I was like, well, what can I do? And after Brittany was buried, not only joining the gym, I wanted to like fast forward. I'm like, Ted, talk me now. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So, well, cause you have such a unique perspective on life because of your journey. Like, yeah, you should have a Ted talk. Right. Cause nobody's not many people are in that exact spot that you were right after. And then, having the emotions you felt and the, 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 the thought process you're going to have. Right. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. I also know I got to be in the base station here and I got to be like, no, you, you're about to ride some serious waves Yeah. and you got things. And that's when I went and visited Brett and Forest yeah. Lawn, yeah. Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Cause you're going worldwide. We're going to, we're going to start oh, being, is, we're being, be famous. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be more specific of locations. Than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is the early days. Yes. Baby. I like this rogue. Yeah. So, <laughs> Brittany's buried in the oldest section of Forest Lawn Cemetery. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, almost near Rick James. <laughs> really? Almost. That Wait. was that was one of the initial first spots. Wait, Rick James is here? Yes. There's no one. The super freak is here. That's amazing. And the... That's about a famous person. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Oh, there is... We're going to go walk Forest Lawn one day. You and yeah, I would love it's to. It's beautiful. I'll, I'll do... And Sean. Sean, are... I'm sorry I did not include you there. <laughs> Is there like a boo? I included myself. I'm okay. Can you guys like, <laughs> is there a boo button? No, 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 no. Shame. Nothing but positive emotions on this podcast, baby. Let's go. Yeah. So I, I thought of Brittany's videos and I was like, and she, she is buried across from what is the mythic elk statue. I and saw I'm in the video. And i that. And yeah. I'm like, here we go. Yeah. I went up. I had nothing on my mind. I'm wearing, I'm wearing my uh, gimmick, my Peaky Blinder hat. Yeah. I think I had a leather coat on my first one. Ray Bans. Spoiler: Why I wore Ray Bans though, I didn't want to be seen crying on camera. I could only admit. I, I, right. like I said, I thought about you a lot ever since yeah. then because I, I'm a person that I want to. I want to feel what you're feeling. I want to learn mm. the emotions. I'm like I can't even comprehend. I can't even. I have this this thought process that when hard things happen, and that's a fucking hard thing to happen good things always come it's mm. it's I, I'm, I'm lately i don't know why i've been on this like thought process a lot about balance and like the ups and down waves like you were just saying you had a wavy ride even the way you said it wavy ride and when i think of waves you're gonna have high highs and low lows high highs and low lows right but there's also timing of those waves yes but you always will float and you'll hold on to something yes and I just took this video, this selfie video, and I just started talking. Yeah. 
and I was just like shaking when I'm done. And I'm like, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I go to the car. I watch it one time to make sure it's not muted or that. Right. I hate the sound of my voice. Same. I hate how I look on camera. <laughs> you look great, brother. Stop it. Thanks, baby. <laughs> and I post it. And then I text a Gen Z part-timer at work. Yeah. Because I know he's going to be on his phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's going to know like he'll be able to critique this. Yeah. And I was like, hey. Did you see my video? And he, uh, he's like, yeah, I'm halfway through it. He's already watching it. I'm yeah. like, is it clear? Can you hear it? He's like, you're good to go. Like, Thank you. Nice. So it felt good. And then like my phone, like I was running out of minutes. It was blowing up. Remember when phones ran out of minutes? Yes, I do. Do they still Remember do when that? they ran out of data? Yes. That was like, you couldn't go on the web browser. Yeah. Remember like when text messages was like your account thing, but then like the internet was like, don't, don't. My parents like, do not go on the internet. You can use up all of our data. Because we have like five megabytes of yeah. information to share between all of us. And a text message took up like a megabyte. We're a, <laughs> cra- a, picture we're a crazy we in, generation like, that we were o- we were like uh, high school when cell phones just started coming out and all this new technology. Oh. So it'll never be that again. No. Which is which is super obscure. So unique. So we know like we remember we're, the old we're the days. Wild West days of like, don't pick up the phone. I'm downloading the new Limp Biscuit song <laughs> off LimeWire. Dude, my favorite was uh, AIM. Yes. Dude, no, I way would message. look for... Oh, text, <laughs> way listen, text, listen, text messages oh. are becoming... AIM. N- no. This is my theory. Like, we need AIM back when you could put up a t- uh, an away message. Or you Dude, could, somebody's going to steal this idea. I had this idea the shark, other day. Shark Tank this. And it's like, because when people text you... And I'm not saying anyone specifically, but when people text you, they expect an immediate response. And we're forgetting what text messages are for and answering machines like voicemails yep. are for. And then all of a sudden, and I get it, you know, especially for me, people are trying to like look out and make sure I'm okay. But if I'm not answering right away, I could be doing something like cutting my lawn. Yeah. yeah. Or even in the shower where I do you not have ha- a normal life. I, to I, live. I do not have a waterproof phone. Yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and and it's just the everything around text messages is like, it's not supposed to be this, um, th- the beast. You got to respond immediately. Like but this, it is, it, it, is. It's it feels beca- like it's, that. it's becoming that. So my mom, funny you say this has a, a thing when she plugs, she has a Subaru safest car on planet earth. Mm. When she plugs it in and I text her, it automatically responds to me saying I am driving. Yes. I cannot safely reply, you know, but then she'll like text me anyways. Yeah. Sorry, mom. But like, it's cool because that's like step one. That's huge. So like an away message. That's huge. Yeah. And then like, yeah. And it makes a lot we, of sense. We all know Mike Fullington here very well. <laughs> Love him. Yep. Love Mike. He made a comment to me the other day and he knows my temperament very well. He goes, I know you're doing okay because you took, you took 24 hours on one of my texts. <laughs> and he knows me for that. Yeah, yeah. He goes, when you're responding immediately, I know you're either... You're high strung or you're anxious. Yeah. Why why is Mez responding so fast yeah. via text? Yeah. I'm always down for a phone call. Yeah. Don't FaceTime me. That takes us right back to the main road of what we were talking about. So no, I'm me, on video. I, I hate being on video. I, yeah, it's it kills cringe. me. It it's kills cringe. me. So my therapy, yeah, <laughs> cr- cringe, cringe AF. Yeah. Right? Yes. There we go. We're getting young so with our talk, talking baby. to my therapist, I'm like on a Zoom call, I'm looking at my hairline. I'm not, I'm, I'm looking at myself. Yeah. Is that a pimple? Yes. Did I trim my nostrils? You know, and <laughs> it's, it's just like. you that I have one nostril hair that it, I always have to comb it back. <laughs> you comb it back? Well, I, I trim, but for whatever reason, I can't get this one thing. You got to pluck it, my friend. I'm going to, I'm going to. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> I'm like, I'm on video and I'm like, this is it. It's yeah. out there now. Do I delete it? Do I let it rip? I get all this love and support from people like, and. and Who wouldn't it, want to love and support but you? But in that video, I said, call someone and say you love them. Yeah. And I had someone I haven't talked to in years reach out to me and they're like, hey, I just called my mom and said I loved her. And I'm like, this is it. That's it. B Mez called this. Yeah. You're gonna do so much good. When when did she tell you this? She told me this less than a week before she passed. Do you think she was having like um like obviously you guys knew, right? I mean We knew we were ish. told we were told in New York City that she had four to eight weeks to live. And then, and she used everything she got to get home. And in our mental fashion, it, it wasn't, this is the end. 
we, we made a list that I have to this day. We're going on the Gerson therapy diet. We're juicing, we're praying, we're meditating. Yeah. We're doing light yoga. Yeah. We're going to go for what type of walk we can go for. Yeah. It was never like, this is the end. Yeah. No, I just mean getting the diagnosis from the doctor. Do you think, do you think that can like change somebody's thought process? Because it, it's almost she, what she said was like philosophical to you, right? Like a message. And it's so true. You are like this right now. You're you being here. This is you're doing good. This is huge. And I got so stoked you started this because this Uh, is this. I was like, I want to go on. I go. All right, my my beautiful mythic elk. Yes, I'm going to Steve's. (laughs) I'm cheating on you. No, 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 not you with the elk. I'm like, (laughs) I'm going from bestiality. Yeah, yeah. No, I just. Do you think it? You think it made her start to. I mean, I know you guys were saying positive. You had a list of things to do, but do you think that makes you think in a certain way? You know what I mean? See, like almost a philosophical type of mentality. Cause what she said came true. Like she almost predicted it. I, do you know, well, cause like when you, when you pass, her, her, she was her, just the way she thought she put things together and even down on paper as I read her journals and I, I share some of that. Yeah. On a most recent <laughs> Facebook post, I shared. Her nice. thoughts on life that I randomly found in the iPad that she never shared with me. But I was starting to kind of dapple through. Is it not dapple? I started to. Dapple? Uh, That's a it's not dabble. dapple. Dabble. Dap. D-A-B-L-E. The, escape, the scapegoat <laughs> wins again. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm too hooked on phonics away from being account, like being someone like. Like I'll be a mayor or something. Yeah. If I could get this like wordage. Well, that's what this is. This game is practice. This is, this, this, we're gonna this figure is. out how to talk <laughs> by the end of this podcast. Yeah. So I d- d- I dabbled, dabbled with the scapegoat, and I was like, Britt, I'm gonna publish your stuff in Britt's fashion. Man, it's not that good. Oh wow. But it's probably amazing. It's it's incredible and beautiful, yeah. and there's so much you can take away from it, and it just inspires me. Like I need to help people, and I need to do things. Yeah. And I don't think it's gonna be becoming a Reiki master and I still own our holistic shop and I'm figuring things out with that. Yeah. But I just want to be like, Hey, I'm a dude. I got anxiety. I'm a widower at a young age. Let's talk. Yes. And I get like immediately through my mind is like, if you're in the seven, one, six Buffalo area code, let's go five, eight, five. Let's get our garbage plate, oh, Rochester shit. friends in there. My wife's from Rochester. Yeah. So she'll appreciate that. It's just like, you're going through something you have, you have OCD or you, you lost someone super close to you. I want it to be like Mark Mez's contact is out there. So that's my ultimate goal. Not to take shine away from you at all. This has become a big part of what this is about. The podcast. The, the original reason I started this is I, I, this is for me. I'm not gonna lie. It's very selfish. I, people who think I'm down here doing it. I've gotten a lot of comments about you're showing people's, you know, addiction journey. Like mm. I'm so happy that's coming from this, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm going to be very honest. I did this for me. <laughs> like, yeah. I love this. Well, thank, thanks for sharing you. With, yeah. Like you're giving, like I told you, I'm like, I'm, I'm amped. This is, this is my next step. Yes. And I, and I want to do this and, and, I, and I'm still going to continue to do my work, yes. my therapy and I'll never stop. Right. But I'm going to still enjoy life. Yeah. And I'm going to travel and I'm going to do things. Yeah. And I think more people need to hear that about each other. Like you're going on a journey, man, a very unique one, but we're all going on journeys. And like, the more we can talk to each other about your journey, my journey, his journey, like it just brings you closer. And then the more you can talk, this is the part that's missing. I think from America <laughs> right now, we don't have the opportunity. Like when do you ever have the opportunity to do something like this? Just sit and talk. I mean, they're other than therapy. No, no, there's, there's always a motive. There's something there, yeah. you, you know, and you, you could be sociable and yeah. But to, to be able to talk like this, undistracted about whatever you want. You want to take this on a crazy left turn? Let's start talking about Egypt. I want, I, <laughs> no, I, I, I want to talk Egypt with him because yeah, seeing a pyramid on my bucket there. list. Oh, I know. I cre- you don't think I creep, creeped no, his social media? I, talk, I did talk to I you. I ate the man's homework. Facebook. I'm going to at least look <laughs> at his photos. I can't believe you brought that back up. That is a memory that wasn't here for a long time so you just brought it back isn't up it, now it's going to be right here for like cool? the rest of my yeah, tap on the cool tap the third eye is it the third eye? It yeah. is. is it the pineal yeah. gland and that's why we don't consume fluoride either going back to how i how i eat you? And I, oh this right here glass bottle yep oh we, we deep We're doing that's, the same that's thing. gonna be second conversation oh, or thir- and third oh but um we had we could talk for hours about just yes. getting healthy you want to hear a funny story of course i 
my beverage addiction is seltzer water. I love the really? plain seltzer water. So I'm not touching natural natural flavors. Like pull up a list of natural flavors. It's longer than a high Q. Yeah. It's like yeah, that, it sounded like you said high Q five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is but, that a high Q? Yeah. yeah. No, I that, bingo. Like you'll see like stuff. Like, so plain seltzer waters. Yep. Yep. I love it. I love the bite. I don't, I'm not even a pop or soda drinker. Yeah. I just like the bite. But it gives you it's got something. Right. It's not just water. So this is like I'm literally in New York and I'm drinking a Canada dry seltzer water from the I can't say this word apparently, bodega. 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 I know I know. Bodega. I just found out somebody else just told me that today. I was like at the bodega and I'm like, what's a bodega? They're like, oh, it's like a Hispanic corner shop. It could be it could be any culture. Right? It's a corner shop, usually like so you go to New York City. But typically, you're have your local one. But t- I mean, we call corner shops corner shops. It's t- it has to be typically a certain race. No, I see, like I spent a ton, a ton of time in New York City and yeah. all different walks of life. Really? Yeah. So they just call corner shops out there bodegas. Yeah. That. Why we have is to, it we that name? Google that, that I don't know. That's what I'm saying. But, gotta, but I do know it. if they have a cat. It's good luck. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I was reading a book in the shop. In the shop. Oh, yeah. So I was reading a Brooklyn. Um, you ever read it? You ever go on Reddit? No, Sean's a big oh, Reddit guy. Yeah, I love Reddit. So yeah. subreddit of just Brooklyn, and someone stole the cat. And this community was like putting security <gasps> Who would photos. Do that? Someone that was feeling unlucky, apparently, because <laughs> they are good luck. So I did. We had cats at my house, and my wife's into the spirit type stuff, right? She's like, oh, because the house we bought, the the lady before us, she died there, I think. And she's like, oh, the house is haunted. But then we came across something that cats, cats actually ward off evil spirits and that I was never a cat guy. And once I found out that fact, I'm like, oh, the cats can stay in the house. Do you ever, I'm cool with it. Does she ever smudge the house or if like, if you buy a used mirror, um, things like that? No, no. Continue. I don't, what does that mean? Like, um, smudging, like. She did the, she did the, uh, yeah, yeah. she saged it. Yeah. Smudging is just another. Oh, uh, okay. You know. Another scapegoat where I love that. You get a free education. The same thing or what? Yeah. But you can like smudge your house. You can uh, usually if I buy a used mirror or used jewelry, yeah. I smudge it and you, and you kind of say a prayer over it. Oh, okay. You can say it out loud. Yeah, she did, that. she did that for us. Yeah. yeah. But like I said, for me, I have a not conflicted view. I'm sorry. Did you have something? Bodega? Oh, yeah. So if you want to know Bodega. I do know. Uh, Bodega is a small owner operated convenience store serving hot and prepared food, often open late, and typically with an ethnic market influence. Okay. So it could be any any ethnic mar- market influence, just as they have a ethnic. Because I was going to say, I mean, why do they call them corner shops then? But I, I could see it probably has to have some, some kind of twist, some kind of, you know, hot tamales or something that you've, you know, that not every corner shop So I, that's where I get my egg sandwiches when I'm in New York. Oh, really? Egg, hard roll, mayonnaise, tomato, no butter, no cheese, no meat. Uh, I like food in general. That's an addic- addiction for me. Food? The, the Just that, eggs that was, yeah. <laughs> there. You really like eggs, huh? I love eggs. Dude, you've been talking about a lot. I want my, I, I'm craving. Eggs? Yeah. So when I bring you some eggs. I'm ready. I take pride in my chicken's eggs. And I talk to this, I've talked about this to many people. You buy a store-bought egg and you put it next to one of my eggs, you'll never buy an egg from the store ever again they're just in comparison the yolk is like a pale yellow the the egg white around it is like cloudy and gross and it's almost runny dude one of mine just looks like nutrition you crack Mm. it and the yolk is this i don't even know the yellow i want to call it it's just the way you're explaining it it, it (laughs) i'm ready it's making me hungry i should be a salesman i i eat i eat three to four eggs a day do you do the wooden egg for your chickens like you you ever hear of that no it's, I don't know if it's like the trick or confuse them. Definitely look into that. Um, I learned that from Dave Asprey. Okay. You ever watch oh, his? Yeah. Yeah. I follow him on he Facebook. He does so in Canada. He uses a wooden egg, and there's, there's someone explained it to me too. The reasoning behind it. Really? But it something. Sean will find out what it's yeah, for. The wooden egg for that. So Dave Asprey. You follow him? Yes. He's very much into the energies, I, and, and and but also very scientific based. Um, he's my competition. Longevity. 
You said he's going to live to 130. I'm going for that. You think so? <laughs> Let's go, baby. But this that's what I mean. Like, I'll follow. I follow everyone yeah, in, yeah. in that sense because I want to gather all that information. Yeah. And curate what's best for Mark Mez. What, where do, how do I feel when I eat this? Or yep. like, so I just started, he's big into light therapy and he yep. like sells the sun, the blockers and that. Yep. My chiropractor got a light machine in. No shit. So uh, f- end of February, I did it for the very first time ever. I went shirtless in the room, 10 minutes, kind of like moved my body with it. And I got my back adjusted. I left his office feeling like I was like six, seven, Really? With five Red Bulls in me. Come on. And it, it's it's true. Like, do when, you think that do you think that was mental at all, or do you do no, you actually felt that was that was zero percent placebo that effect? Really? That was just like. And what is this like therapy? It's it's like you're introducing just like the sun to your body in a sense, dude. I, I went through like a, a minor depression in January. Absol- do you remember absolutely. when we had like no sun here for? Oh well, like yeah, a we month? we lack vitamin D and. But I mean, we, we there was like a month in our winter this past winter where we it was like twenty five days like recorded of actual no sunlight because right. it was so cloudy and the, um I could say this I I, I take I've taken Adderall I stole it from my wife right because it gives you focus and energy and I know it's very widely abused and I didn't like the way it was making me feel because I was I took it and it's just like any drug like you take it. You feel really great taking it the first time. And then every day after that, I think you just lose a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Your body starts to build like a resistance yeah, to it. And then you need more and more. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then I was like, yeah, I'm, I don't want to just be dependent on it. And I tried to stop. And it just so happened that I timed stopping with when we had 25 days of no sunlight. Dude, I was in, I told you this, I was in like a little mini depression. He mm-hmm. didn't notice it. And I, to me, I noticed it. I know myself very well. I just wasn't me. I didn't feel good. I went into like a little mini depression. I'll never forget this. It was like March and it was 40 degrees out, but sunny. Dude, I went outside in my underwear Mm. and laid on my deck and just sat there. And it was, the sun was so bright. It was keeping me warm. There was no wind. So like 40 degrees and sunny is like, you can go outside. I had not felt such a high without being high off of something in my entire life. The sun is so much more important than we realize to human beings. I think we just, it's just one of those things we just take for granted, I, but I don't mean to take away from your no, I, light therapy. No, I, I like think that. that's what we it, need light. You yeah. Need, like plants need it. Like we need, I don't plants. think you just like need, need is the word, right word, but you really need it. Absolutely. Yeah. Need is definitely the, right word I know, you need the sun or you need the light therapy we can use need as, i'm just saying like the word need is like doesn't seem like you really need and then as required. i'm learning, required 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 is much better one, yeah. i'm learning this through andrew huberman i follow him dave asprey that the sunlight is vitamin d vitamin d controls your um hormone production and i've talked about this with my other guest we are just bags of chemicals that are based off of our hormones, right? So if you're not getting sunlight that helps regulate those hormones, like you could be not you, which I I was. I was a messed up bag of chemicals Mm. from not getting sun, and I felt not me. I just didn't feel good. So I'm very curious about that light therapy. I think Check it out. I'm gonna. But now we're hitting, you know, our, what do we get, like 13 days of summer in Buffalo? Oh, I know. I know. know. The days, I keep, I cannot believe it. It's it's so stupid. I've lived here. I'm 33 years old. It never ceases to amaze me. Every year, I'm like, oh, honey, look. It's like 8.45. It's still light out. Right. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, and then the next day, I'm, it's, it's just, I just said it like two days ago. I'm like, honey, can you believe this? It's like 9 o'clock. It's still sunny out. Right. Like, can you believe this? And then it, all, all the way up until it'll be 9.30 at night, you know, in the peak of our summer. And I'll be like, hey, guys, did you realize it's still light out? I, we just take it for granted. Oh, without a doubt. You know, it's one of my one of my favorite things. So do you think, I mean, it's probably, I could look this up too, but <laughs> our area, Seattle, Buffalo, areas further north that get less sunlight, overall more depressed, sadder people. So then you get closer to the equator, you get happier. I want to say people. I've heard of a scientific study that was done that people in Seattle are prone to depression or something like that because they're... If I'm not mistaken, they're probably 
one or two or top areas that don't see the sun often because it's so cloudy and rainy there all the time. And I want to say somebody did a study that those people are genuinely depressed. So talking about on Reddit, the one time I saw it, it was like somewhere in Russia when you live close to the Arctic Circle and then you get almost no sunlight for like the year, they had this big UV light in the middle of the room and then kids with like tanning goggles on and then like just underwear and they're just standing there just getting light just <laughs> mm. just getting light because they don't get it well, okay, from but that, naturally. Okay, so I want to ask about that because then I heard that tanning booths because that's tanning booths, right? I don't think what they were doing. I think that was more like light therapy or some kind of like way to get natural Ooh, light, get your might, vitamin D because they weren't getting it naturally. That might be my next area of research. Because I like every once in a while, I'll deep dive into a subject. You rabbit hole it? Yeah, yeah. I want to understand the differences. And I've told this to Sean. I'm big on the vibration thing, not just as an energy as a person, but we've talked about Egypt. And I think that ancient technology, uh, Joe Rogan had on Randall Carlson. Yo, Randall Carlson, this is a shout out if you ever hear this. Bro, we're still waiting for you to drop the information about the freaking vibrational tech that you said was coming on Rogan. And you said like a couple months, it's been like six or seven or eight or a year now. Right. And months for it's sure. It's been a long time. Months. And I'm been waiting. Longer since I'm waiting. He was going to drop. So yeah. Like, so he's freaking me out that he's been ticking. like getting assassinated by the government. Cause they don't want that tech to come out. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> I think ancient civilizations did exist. And I think they harnessed some kind of, vibration tech power because if everything is vibration and you can control vibration dude you can control almost everything in the material world i mean do you do you think like where we're at in life that an ancient so like ancient people were past us yeah but there was a quote-unquote world-ending event yes erased it all erased all the records we started over i often think this as human beings, even, even human beings today, we are so not, I don't want to use the word dumb because that's offensive. Our memory is so short because I see human beings now, especially in America, we're making all the mistakes our forefathers did a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, a thousand years ago. If you really look at history, I was reading uh, Marcus Aurelius, the, um, what's the book called? Meditations. He's describing ancient Rome, like he in, in the book he describes like what's happening in his lifetime. It is eerily similar to the political atmosphere now. Mm. And that's how many years ago, if you can look that up for me. Doesn't that kind of creep you out that we have the same similar, I mean, it's creepy and not creepy, that we have the same problems they had back in ancient Rome and we still have them today. No, it doesn't creep me out. It's just, we're kind of foolish. Do you ever think we're living in a simulation? Oh, man. Now we're getting into it, Mark. Mez, this Where is why I brought this you on, good baby. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Now you're getting me excited. Oh, you're repositioning. I'm repositioning. Okay. I like is... that. I did that a while ago. Oh, because we. it's hard to get to this point to, to have this kind of conversation. I feel like, you know, you, like we talked. You, to, we always have. I know. But but now we got Sean with us. Now. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just hard to like. Should we take a break and do some four, seven, eight breathing? What is that? Four, seven, eight. You inhale for four seconds. We, we hold it for it seven. We have to get breathe. Yeah. Then you exhale yeah. for eight seconds. I do it all the time. That sounds, yeah. I do the, um, Andrew Huberman does the. Yeah. I do that. I don't do the four. What is it? Four, seven, eight. Four, seven, eight. I do the. My therapist inhale, taught me lock, the. And like, then inhale some more and then let it all. Yeah. So what's it, four, seven, eight do for you? For me? For anybody that, that does it. I, I think it's going to be different for the individual. <clears throat> to speak for myself, it does, it, it just grounds me. It kind of brings me, brings me, like my mind's going into intrusive thoughts or it's, it's going just haywire. Yeah. Just brings me back. Because mm -hmm. all, all I'm thinking right there is like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these breaths. I'm going to hold these breaths. I'm going to be counting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm not worried about, did I misplace my wallet? Or, yeah. Did I like so do you this? you struggle with that too? Oh, regularly. It, and and do you think that's like that's not your OC? That's I'm, just normal. Right now, I'm I'm like a fruit fly with things. I will. Where I'm at, I'll just be like, I I try to keep some order, but I don't try to become obsessive with it. So I do a lot of habit forming things. Like yeah. I will always put my keys and wallet in this section of my house. Yes. And then I will not have this issue 
yeah if i do that but then and I'm, I'm pretty good with it but then there'll be the one time that i don't do it like i had to i went in the house i had to run to the bathroom right just for some reason didn't do it then that moment comes of oh my gosh where did i where did i put that stuff yeah you know do a breathing technique and i calm down and you, you, you put things in perspective like well, if someone has my car keys and they steal my car, they obviously need it more than I do right now. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna work it out. And that's pretty extreme thinking. Like I'm no, not no, I'm not trying I, to ask get, for my car to get stolen, but, but, but I get what you're saying. It's 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 putting it in perspective. Yeah. I do that all, I thought that was just me. See, this is my way of talking. But that's and, and that that's the one thing I took away. Like big rewind on those Facebook groups I joined for <clears throat> like coping and like mm -hmm. being a widow, widower. There was like a, a, believe it or not, a meme that resonated the most with me and it was just like <laughs> when you see best. when you see your best friend in a casket nothing can really mess you up Oof, and that kind of stuck with me i'm like huh and, but now as time goes by i just shared this on my last therapy session i am capable of hurting and i had this like I got, i'm like i got this new armor on what can it nothing worse can happen to me yeah and that and that is true to a yeah. point but still capable of hurting like yeah. I could, and not just physical pain like i can emotionally hurt and that i'm i'm really happy that i had that happen to me and that thought and that realization sooner than later and not have this life of like well uh, can i can i sh share my interpretation of of what that was i don't think that you can still emotionally hurt i just think it's the way it hurts you mm. That is a huge moment, right? You know what I mean? So I don't, I think because you've had that experience, it just puts all the other hurt into perspective. Like nothing could ever be that bad because you've had this like Mount Everest of hurt. So that, yeah, they're right. still going to have hurt. Correct. But it's just that it's like, I think it makes it more manageable to like, I think about this often. That's what life is. That's what experience is. As you gain more experiences, as you get older, it's not that the future experiences aren't going to hurt or you're not going to feel them, but you're able to kind of categorize them and, and put yes. them in perspective. Like, yeah, like you saw Brit in a casket. So like when you lose your keys, it's right. still anxious. It gives you anxiety, but it's like, but I just lost my keys. You know, Correct. it's not, it's not seeing her. And I feel that's like the, the way I always view it. And I don't, and that's why I will always say and believe cancer didn't win because she gave me this gift. Yeah. yeah she yeah. gave me this gift of like, it's not that bad and things aren't this awful. And I'm, yeah. and I'm grateful and I'm more humble. Yeah. And I, well, I'm, that's my, that's my, that's my hard always seems to hard and change always seems to bring about better and good. Yeah. Because you, you, you having that experience, it gave you that very, um, unique perspective now that like yes and it she was gave you that armor almost i don't want to be like just nonchalant with things i still want to respect things i want to respect our home yeah. i want to respect people's time yeah energy um i want to respect gifts given to me but like that level of like obsessing with it it flew out the window literally yeah and <laughs> literally literally yeah just i i just i don't i don't window, yeah. you open the window and you're like but I don't Not like, doing it. but I used to like, I would worry. Like I had, I'll share this with you. Uh, probably five years ago, I had this intrusive thought just hit. It's like, I watched a YouTube video. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and it was about HIV. And I remember where I was standing at work yeah. <laughs> at the ice rink. <laughs> and I watched this video and I'm like, Mark, stop watching this. It's going to do something to you. Like I had my mind going, I kept watching and then, all of a sudden, I created this monster in my mind. I go home. I'm like, Britt. She's like, what? I'm like, I might have HIV. <laughs> like, seriously. At uh, 31 years, 30, 31 years old. And she's like, well, first off, as your wife, I hope you don't. But why? Like, <laughs> tell me, tell me more. Yeah. And that's just how OCD and these intrusive thoughts work. And, like, the best way I can explain it is, like, you know, when you watch, like, a show or, like, a cop movie or that you see the detective board with all the strings yeah, yeah, going yeah. like it could be this person here's a clue mm -hmm. my mind just created this whole scenario and then i had four or five therapy sessions about like do i have aids yeah just now here i am a married man faithful to my wife yeah i'm not a drug user right i'm not i don't have things that i'm exposing myself to that could i could be hiv positive yeah, yeah, i get it i get it 
and my therapist and I talked about it and I'm proud of myself because I didn't run out to get a blood test. And I did eventually. <laughs> I did eventually, but I, like I, I whatever lived. It it's, takes, a it's a whatever jar. Whatever it takes to soothe the thought. It's a jar Why of frogs. Not? It's a jar of frogs. Say you have a frog phobia. You got a giant jar full of frogs. What do you do? Put your fingertips in there. You got to embrace the fear. <sighs> and you go lower and you go lower and you go lower. And then I hit, I got a little low and I was like, all right, I'm getting blood work. And yeah. then I get the results and, yeah. I'm, and I'm just like, oh, I have HIV. Oh, I'm and then, then like, and then like a few weeks later, I make a joke of it and be like, yeah, yeah. Remember when I thought I had HIV? <laughs> and it's just like not laughing at the seriousness no, 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 of no, no, it. No, 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 Yeah, I but, know you're. But that, <clears throat> that is just like why mental health is so important about you know, you have this monster in your head, like, what are you going to do? Like, and that's, that's an issue that I have with why is it so hard? I have met so many people when I talk mental health, that they can't find a therapist, period. They don't even get to like, have the Yelp review of like, ah, oh, this therapist wasn't for me. They can't find one. Wow. Because I just feel like there's not enough. And they're fully booked. Yeah. And then insurance gets involved. Yeah. And it's just, it's sad. It's very do, sad to me. Do you think this is a form of therapy? Like, do you think this would help people to be able to just sit and talk to somebody like this? Without a doubt. And I'm not, in well, this any is sense. me encouraging people. A lot of people, more people should have a podcast. I'm not saying just like me. I feel like yeah, more people just need to say like what my feelings are. Well, this is, this is my, I was trying to tell Sean, this is my thing is like, I, I think you said it about people used to sit on the porch a lot more often because of the times, like less TV, less yeah. distractions, just less technology. You didn't have a computer, in and your because pocket of that, they used to sit and talk to each other. You like you just had nothing else to do. Correct. So you would sit and talk. That is therapy. You would have your you would have your AOL aim message away <laughs> yeah, out, yeah. out with out with friends. Yeah, like that was that was, um, but that is, that was therapy before we. Do you think almost? I, I just noticed mental health is more of a thing for our age generation. Do you think it's because we lack this? The time to set aside of being bored, of, of being able to talk to each other? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And Communication's so, key. Oh. And it's okay to not to be okay. And yeah. there's a big thing, like, not only, in my opinion, of what I'm going through, there's this weird stigma on death in America. Yeah. Like, so many people can't sit. Like, I appreciate you giving me the space to open up and talk about that. Of course, bro. But if I would write down all the things that were said to me as a new widower, <laughs> like you can make a card game out of it it'd be like blur oh, what is oh. it blurbs against humanity uh, or something i no, no, no. What? cards against cards humanity? against cards, cards against humanity okay See, thank we're, you we're gonna learn yeah. how to talk you're gonna be mayor next year bro. I, I had what, <laughs> I, I, I just straight up forgot the name of that card yeah. game. i'm an uno reverse kind of guy oh, um <laughs> no give me jenga all day oh, so like i walked into an establishment where i'm kind of known and the person says to me you're the one and uh, I, I take pride in my, my wittiness and my, my quick retorts. You are very witty. And I go, the one as in Neo from The <laughs> Matrix. And I did like a like crummy little like, I'm like, yes, my wife just passed. We can say that. And it came out. I was, that's what I ripped up. That's what he or she said to me. Like, oh, to? Yeah. And it's just like, we can talk about that. So can I give you, again. That doesn't help. Can when, I give you a perspective? change not perspective change can i give you a perspective on that sure because that's that's like my thing i don't know why I, when i went to your wife's wake my sure sounded kind of angry there no it didn't you don't think so did it come through no no that's it that's we're a gonna edit that thing. part out says, no, no, i'm no. like clenching my fist like <laughs> <laughs> our minds are the most gone under things. the table okay. yeah yeah tell me no um i thought about what to say to you when I was going to get to the edge of the line mm. over and over and over because yeah. I didn't know what to say. Cause I, I'm like, Do that, I was wanna... a, that was a line, the line to come see me. Let me set the stage on that. Oh high yes. tech so, oh. I didn't know that's how it was going to go down. Me neither. I didn't know I was just going to stand I there. I avoid wakes like right. the plague. I'm not, a, I don't, I'm a, I'm uncomfortable with that kind of right. stuff. But, and like, and if Brittany was here, I would make this joke. Yeah. Be like we should have had a fast pass at Disney. <laughs> like people could have. Like I'm a busy person. I'm a busy person. Can I, I'm a busy person. Can, can I get the horn on that to, one? Can, can I get to the front of the line really quick? <laughs> and she loved that horn sound too. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like it was just like, but the, I, I totally interjected myself. No, but no, no. like this is conversation. People having the patience and the time, 
and to drive out and just pay respects like that. Yeah. Meant the world. It but meant it, the world. It was also nerve wracking because I knew the situation you were in. I knew the situation that had just happened. And I didn't know if I wanted to be like, make like a witty joke to make you laugh because people are coming in the whole time. And it's like a, <laughs> it's like a sad situation. Right. So like, do I come in and like make a joke? Cause you know, like we yeah. got that relationship, like correct. Give him his spark of the day. I was like, yeah. And I oversaw it. Like I got almost anxiety. Would it be anxiety about what to say? Anxiety. And I'm like, oh. so I think I just want you to remember that when people are coming to you, cause you are the one, you're the one in the situation. No, nah, and I'm not saying. So we're going back to the simulation conversation. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Tell me more. Just like, so like you're you in your world. So all this input's coming to you, but in my world, you're one person in my reality that had this situation that happened to you. So like, I don't know how to address it. I don't know how to. S- right. You, so I'm going to, I'm going to unclench my fist because yeah. that is a really good perspective. You know what I mean? My, like, my, no, it was because I, that I person made, probably didn't know what to say. Like, right. Uh, and I, he sees you and he's like, you're the one. I, <laughs> like, I made. Like a, yeah. But that's. No, I appreciate you sharing that because you know, it should be America should be more open because I spoiler alert internet we all die yeah and that and i think once you accept that and then you live life the best and fullest yes. and spread joy and dance and eat whatever yes just just live your life of course and and i didn't i didn't view it like that and i tried to do a lot of icebreakers at the wake yeah and yeah. i made a i made fun of my outfit <laughs> a, a ton yeah i asked some people if i looked like a hipster undertaker because i <laughs> had like the wrestler because <laughs> i had the brim and i had like the skinny dress pants and the vest but that was that was mark Mas 101 yeah, that outfit outfit baby that's and what then, i mean you you dress to the and then i tens or the to nines oh you might be thinking i think it's dressed to the nines is that to do with like golf yeah, or something yeah. what is that i don't know i don't know where it comes what from what is it the nines but i want to say i was you're always dressed that gets what i mean you just you got a look, baby. I was dressed 11 cubed. I'm going past that. Oh, 11 cubed. No, I appreciate that compliment. And it's just like, and I just wanted like, Brittany fueled me. And they kept trying to like, the funeral home worker is like, do you want the widower's chair? And I started laughing and I'm like, that does sound I'm like, funny. is that like the Game of that Thrones a, sword? It's a real chair. It's, it's a chair, apparently, that w- there's one arm and then one's open so you could sit and hug people. Oh. And I just bursted out laughing. And but in my mind, I was like, Brittany Mez can go through this cancer two and a half years and open this business up with me and better us and better our home. But no, I'm I'm gonna stand yeah. and get poked and prodded and have all these things done to her and taken such it's stride. Putting it in perspective for you, Correct. though. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like But I, that doesn't make me think then someone's like, Oh, I stubbed my toe, it hurts. I don't wanna be in life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You you know nothing of pain. No, because everyone if 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 I'm giving you the time and that that's a piggyback thing, like when people are like, oh, it's nothing what you just went through. No, if I'm sitting or I'm standing and I'm looking you in the eyes, I want to respect what's going on with you. Yeah, and we don't we don't need to compare and contrast. Right. what I went through. That's it right there. Let's, that's it's the comparing of your pain to my pain. Oh no no that's not you know that's not my level of pain that's not pain that's not as painful what i'm going right pain is pain pain is pain pain and and if you're you know what if you want to open up to me and you you find you know you're you're trusting in in me to to reply to you or give you some advice or even just listen yeah sometimes you just need to listen and that's it and you can say thank you for sharing that with me yes and then they go thank you neil you are the one. <laughs> you do kind of resemble. I, yeah. A little I, bit. Doesn't he kind of resemble? I totally see it. Yeah, you I see it a little it. bit. I guess yeah. he's a little right. bit. Yeah, a little well, bit. Well, so Metaverse, Kiana is John Wick, Widower. Mm. Yo. Mm-hmm. Where are we going with this? Yo. <laughs> do you have like a secret life you don't know about that you're just this? Do you have a dog? A sa- <laughs> is it living? No. no. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start Morse code Dude, tapping. Tell me how, can we talk, I haven't talked to movies on my, my podcast. John Wick. Phenomenal. I mean, if a somebody so says good. to me, if a somebody, if a somebody says to me. <laughs> that they, <laughs> you talk about the Mario movie now? No, no. I just, the way that that little, like if a somebody comes, I just, I'm like, made me feel Italian. If they say they don't like John Wick, I, I question. Think of, I think of, you know, uh, Kings of Leon. 
Yes. Going, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going Mario, and I'm going somebody. <laughs> I'm going perspective again. Perspective. You went Kings of Leon. Yeah. You went. I went Mario. Yeah. You went Italian. I went Italian. <laughs> yeah. Italian Mario, kind of. It's pretty close. Very close. Plumber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if they tell me they don't like John Wick or they haven't seen it, I kind of judge them. You kick them off the podcast. Yeah, I kind of judge. Have <clears> you <throat> seen them all? Have you seen the new one? Yes. I haven't seen the new one yet. Have you seen them all? Step up yes. your game, bro. Oh, so I'm very I'm slacking. I'm love, slacking. love, 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 love movies, yes. entertainment. Me too. And I had a hard stop, and I thought that I was going to be watching movies and TV nonstop and avoid music because I love more than movies is music. I know, like, dads. Yeah. I know. You seen the record Mesmer collection? I was just gonna say. You seen the records? He's got records. And I was a like, record player. That's their thing. Yeah, come over. Wow. Yeah, man. You come would, on over. Leave, leave the homework in the car. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> using, I'm gonna stop using that bit. I'm, I'm beating bring, a dead no, horse now. I'm gonna bring more. Is it, is it a horse? More, uh, or am I beating a dead goat? Is it the escape goat? I don't goat? know. But dressed to the nines means to be wearing fashionable and formal clothing for a special occasion. So that's that's oh, a real thing. You're always. Did you see what year that comes from? But you're always dressed to the nines, Mark Mess. It looks I appreciate like that. The, I'm coming back 50s. for the compliment. <laughs> I made that up, but I'm going right. to say the fifth. I just get like Charleston, Charleston, made in North Carolina. Like, I think that's when it's like, get them, boys. You, know? <laughs> you do have that vibe. You do have, I, I a, get that vibe you do off. have an old timey. You do have an old timey. I'm an old soul. You are an old soul. I think I'm an old soul. I think you're an old soul. I think we've talked about this. And I want to I want to talk about religion because it's kind of whoa, piggybacks whoa. on the I uh, do but movies first. Okay, I do want to talk religion we have big to. time. Well, no my, it's one spoilers of my... for the new John yes. Wick. So yeah, yeah, I won't. Just don't, okay. I barely remember to be honest. They they kind of all blended together. Oh, so and I'm good. saying I'm not saying this in a they, negative they way. They kind of got obnoxious. Yeah, and I'm okay with yes. it. But they had did to. They? Did okay, four get obnoxious? But that's that's yeah. John Wick. That's the that's the thing. The John Wick thing is like the scenes are so like he was the one movie he's like stabbing the dude in the eye and you're like watching the eye the knife go in the eyeball yeah, yeah. he broke that one dude's neck with like a book yeah on top of a bigger yeah. book like how but, but that's but that's kind of what john wick was right yeah. like that was the movie like the reason you were watching it is it was so gory gory yeah. is it, go- it's, it wasn't it's gory. More, i don't think i i liked Dramatic. it more for like the tactics like it looks so tactical and john or keanu reeves um, he mm-hmm. practices all that, like yeah, legit, goes yeah. to the range and does all like yeah. the with the long rifles. <laughs> Did and the they pistols. say we're in like a Keanu sans, like a renaissance of Keanu? Oh, <laughs> you ever see where he's like been alive forever? Like that's another Reddit rabbit hole. I, like he's really? a vampire, yeah, because his face is like. Look the at same. the Matrix and look at him now. No, he's, he's like the same dude. No, he's j- he looks very much younger. No. Did you watch look at um, the pictures of him from nineteen twenty? No, no. What's the um, Point Break? You see him in Point Break? He looks is like that a little the one boy. With the bus? No, no, that's with no, uh, that's that's Sandra with uh, no Patrick. That's that's Speed. That's Patrick speed, Swayze yeah. and Keanu and Point like, Break. Ke- one of my favorite movies. Keanu oh, is an undercover. He goes he looks like a little boy. He goes oh, okay. into uh, that's the surfers who are robbing yeah. banks. Yeah, yeah. One of the a cop they, and they remade that movie. And I'm sorry. I mean, it was still a good movie, but it was not the original Point Break. I, yeah. it just they ruined. You it. can't remake everything. You can't, they remake everything. Some remakes are good. I just I got a chip on my shoulder because I feel like once you steal the idea, because I've seen the originals, I don't know maybe it's just a me thing. When I see a remake, no matter how good it is, like I think the the Point Break remake was a good movie. It was action packed. It was fun to watch. Yeah. But I'm like, you stole the idea. I'm gonna right now. Ready? First movie to come to mind. Your favorite movie of all time, Sean? Go. Oof, uh, Black Knight. No, Dark Knight. <laughs> Black Knight. Black Knight is a movie with... No, it's a remake. No. It was a remake with Will Smith. No. <laughs> no, Black, Black Knight is a late 90s, early 2000s uh, uh, Martin Lawrence film. Is it really? No, yeah, oh, he goes back in called? time to like a renaissance. Oh, you're right. The Black Knight. That's yeah. actually... Is it? Is that what the movie's yes, called? Yes, it's funny. Uh, he's a hilarious Yeah, actor. he's great. And that movie, I do love that movie. I just forgot that that was actually the name of it. But The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger mm. and the Joker. Oh, oh man. Yeah, he's you, one of my Joker. all-time Do you favorites. like Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker? I, you know, the peak of the Joker was Heath Ledger for me. So like... He I always the, thought he, he was a little standard. darker than he, he is, like clowny. So that that was peak. So to me personally, I like. But dude, arguably the there. Joaquin Phoenix one, he's pretty dark. I, it so is that's dark. my second it's favorite film more, of all time. Really, like, the new the with yes. Hakeem. With, 
Yeah, it, it is when he does that little dance. Oh, dude, he oh, it's like he's off like doing creepy, tai chi and he does like a great creepy the streets, character. Is that when, when well, he's he, he gets off the subway after he murdered the Robert De Niro. No, that like earlier the first time he murders and then he like goes into like a park or the subway station or a park little bathroom and he just starts. And like on the director's commentary, they even said that like. He just started doing that, and that's yeah. why he's such oh, a good actor. And yeah. the same thing, he's like, Heath, Ledger, actor. like Heath Ledger's, great. you know what his one of his famous ones is, and it's my favorite thing from the movie is that clap he does like this. Oh, in he the just cell? started, yeah, he just yeah. that wasn't even part of the script. He just started doing his it. Face during that scene too, yeah. he's just like looking. Oh, and man, the director, director is like Christopher Nolan. He's like, I'm gonna keep that in. Yeah. I'm I'm so far from that type of dark mentality. I I. I'm really amazed at how like I I'm, I'm afraid of the the dark mm. legit. I like, embrace my black. dark side. Like the evil? Really? Yes. I don't. I, I I'm, I I'm, I'm it creeps me out. I'm not you, that kind of person. Do you do you know anything about um like homeopathic like remedies and yeah, things like yeah. that? So I've been seeing a homeopath on top of my therapist okay. and that's part of my my I healing journey. I thought it was journey. just like natural medicine. Yeah, yeah. but you get like um Explain life like I'm five. One of my favorite subreddits on Reddit. Oh yeah. Um, for me, for homeopath, and maybe I'll get yelled at for this. It's like you're getting compared to a house plant. <clears throat> what plant is most you, and what you're going through? Oh. In my session, so Britt did homeopathic work, like sessions. She's like, this is everything I ever wanted. It's a therapist. It's a guidance counselor. It's a life coach. It's a friend. Just it's it's a it's a cornucopia of just this wisdom. That sounds so cool. And I remember going on a walk and she's telling me about this. And here I go and do my first session a few months ago. And it was just like, I was asked a few questions and I went down this path of at the very end, an hour later, I goes, I'm like, how did I get here? <laughs> and it got really, really dark. It really? got so dark. And I was like, wait, the, this is nothing to do with the question I was at, but it all made sense getting wait, wait, there. I, I'm, what do you mean it got dark? Your response is like feeling my, or my, what, my, the my response, my feeling, maybe the way I'm living. So, but it was your perception, in a sense, yeah. I, I mean, like, was the tone? Was the person saying this? Like, no, a, you just felt it went down a dark. My homeopath yeah. didn't have to say much. It was just enough questions oh. to get me so he, there. Was it he or she? It was a she. She, she was like kind of pulling things out of you. Yes, it was. Ah. It was beautiful, and but dark. But dark. And so my my remedy is, at the time, Brazilian rattlesnake. And so the way I best can explain it and understand it is that, like, I'm a positive, light warrior, spread the joy person, but I got this darkness. Mm. And I'm constantly avoiding getting swallowed by this darkness. And I was, it was winter, and I'm fully clothed, and I remember her going, my homeopath, Sally, going, Mark, you got a bunch of tattoos under your uh, jackets? I'm like, yeah. Like, like skulls and stuff? I'm like, yes. <laughs> She's like, metal music? Yes. Uh, ever had drinking issues? Yes. And it's just, and it's like I'm constantly just trying to be pulled into this darkness, but I'm not allowing that. But I'll feed it. I'll feed it by like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blast some Norwegian black metal. And enjoy it. Like, I'm going to smile at this. Or I'm going to watch the Joker and, and, like, start laughing. You know those people that, like, laugh at horror films? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It, again, it's 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 dark. This podcast just got dark. No, no, no. no. Turn the lights I, down. This is, this is my real speaking no, voice. Yeah, no, <laughs> I start I, levitating. I think, people, I think people need to see this. Yes. Because I'm not, I don't have that at all. Like, I, I refer to myself as a goody two shoes. Like, I don't. <laughs> so when I hear these things, I'm like. Yeah. I could see it though. I can understand it. It's like, it's such a strange. Well, it's the whole yin and yang too. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you have to have both. I feel like, again, with that positive negativity, I don't think that's. Toxic positivity? Yeah. Yeah. Po yeah toxic positivity. I don't think that's really real. Somebody like you be as positive as you want, but to embrace the dark, I think is just as healthy to understand it. Know it's there. Don't let it control you, but let it out. Like I, I'm guilty of looking at some weird shit on Reddit that's like, I didn't need to watch that person get hit by that car. You know, like it says not safe for work. Don't right. need to click on it. Still do. You know, like sometimes watching and seeing the dark side of the world really puts in the light the happier things. See, I don't have that. What does that mean? I just feel like 
just understanding both. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, because imagine you're very happy go lucky, lucky, but say something terrible does happen, you know, in, in your life. And like you see right outside the shop right here, somebody get hit by the car. And if that's the first time you're introduced to something so dark, Maybe it could screw you up a little bit more uh, than if you've kind of eased see, into a couple. I've I've had a fairly images. trauma-free life. I've said this before that yeah. I don't have much. I, I'm very very lucky. I'm very. I don't like using the word blessed because it insinuates religion and God and all that. But I am very blessed. I've had mm. a I've had a uh, almost too easy of a life. I will say, I do enjoy periods of intense loneliness and quiet. My hunting and the woods, the deep woods. So it's not dark, but it's very much the opposite of who I am in my natural life. Like in my, in my everyday life, I see a lot of people. I talk a lot. I'm always bubbly and going. But there's times where I almost want to go down the rabbit hole. Oh. You got to recharge also. No one, can, no one can just stay dark or no one can just stay. Balance. We talked about this. It's all about balance. The balance. Um, your movie. You said that was my number movie. two, number one. Drive. Ryan Gosling. Drive, drive. drive. Yeah? Yes. I don't know if I've seen it. I don't think that. I've seen it either, but I know exactly right. which one you're talking We're gonna about. We're going to have a viewing party. Do a podcast viewing party Ooh. on that with me. I'll, I'll just have a movie night with you boys. That I would, would be awesome. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. For, this is male bonding right yeah, here. So. Yeah. so the movie wasn't, it wasn't, the way they put the trailer out in that, like people thought it was going to be like a Fast and Furious and that. It's nothing like that. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> it's dark. It's moody. It's artistic. It's something Ryan Gosling I don't think has ever captured. Well, one he, other movie. He plays a really good dark Place character. Behind the Pines. Did you all ever oh, see that? I love that yeah, movie. So that was so good. We're doing a du- we're doing a du- double header. Dude, you gotta catch du- up. Wait, double, double header is baseball. What's what's two double movies? Feature. Double feature. Yeah. Go to the, go Am to the I drive joking in? now at this point, or do I just mess up every phrase possible? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing with you, Mark. It's I said thing. the Black Knight. So <laughs> <laughs> way off. So yeah, but I'm gonna have to rewatch it. And then the soundtrack. I have the vinyl. We can go and movie vinyl party. Really? I'm for And we could drink some dark that beers awesome. with it. Set Bro, the mood. I'm I'm on a journey. I don't drink anymore. No alcohol. Not a single drop. Good for you. It's again, <laughs> I I've never really liked drinking. So it's a pretty easy transition for me. I did it <clears throat> socially. Like <clears throat> I did it to loosen up mm-hmm. liquid courage just because like I was very easily swayed when we, we would go out, people were like, Hey, you want to drink? Okay. But I never really liked it. And then when I stopped, it just wasn't a big thing for me. Hmm. But Did yeah, it? I, I, again, it was like, a, once I learned the science behind how much it messes you up, even one night of binge drinking, it's, it's for me, it's like when I learn something, I can't not uh, remember it. Like right. once I learned drinking was not good for your body, I was like, yeah, I'm done. It's it's in, I mean, I knew in your brain. I knew drinking wasn't bad for you, but there was always that science that like right. one glass of wine no, and a you're day right. is good like, for you. I'm like, oh, okay, so it's okay, and that it just kind of justified it for me. But then as soon as I was like, I th- like I found out that that's no good for you. They did a scientific study that even one glass of wine for you, there really is no health benefits. I'm like, why am I drinking at mm, all? Right at all? And I and I know that's an issue because I'm so clean how I eat. Yeah, I won't drink my water in plastic bottles. Yeah. You know, yeah. fluoride filters. I was on the phone with Canada Dry in New York asking if their seltzer water had fluoride and they couldn't answer me. But then weekend comes, I'm at the bar. I'll take a pint pint of the black stuff, Guinness, please. I so like, I just feel like had Guinness one of those yesterday. Is yeah. good for you though. For the Irish, sure. <laughs> Irish? Polish? Uh just a hat. <laughs> <laughs> no Irish at all. Um my nationality is a podcast in its own. <laughs> really yeah so yeah, that do, you, much do you guys remember that whole that whole um threat like maybe your parents generation of like they'd be like we're gonna drop you off at father baker's no i never got to, oh, my this, parents are deaf so they missed out on mm, a lot of the cultural mm, stuff mm. so there was i'm very naive to a lot of shit <laughs> no like so this was this was a threat because father, yeah, father baker's it. is yeah. like uh you could just drop a child off no questions asked it's an orphanage. at any age it's an orphanage so yeah, yeah. Leave them at the door. You're Drive sick. Of, you're sick of your like 37 year old kid living in the basement. <laughs> you drop it off. No, like so. My grandfather was actually dropped off in the cradle there when he was an infant, and I have been on this on and off research, trying to figure out what his nationality is, 
and like I'll gain a little speed on it in traction, and then I'll have like twenty steps back. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you ever do an ancestry thing, uh, DNA? Um, I don't want the government having my data. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straying away from all of that right now. Um, I have fa- family members that d- did it, and there's this whole like thing that came up of potentially Italian now. Uh-huh. So I could see it. Yeah. My mom's side, Polish. I understand that. So I'm fifty percent. Like Polish genes are strong. Fifty you percent know. Polish, fifty percent mystery meat. We're going to figure it out one day. I wrote to Father Bakers. Dog, bro. I called them and they wouldn't like, they were like, you have to write a letter. They got like super old school with and it. And you have to adopt a kid too. Yeah. Or else we're not yeah, right. giving you anything. <laughs> um, really quickly, how are we on time? I know you've got a... Uh, 10 minutes to 7 o'clock. So he's got a hard time limit today. There it is. 10 so, minutes. So Cut this, me off. Yeah. Episode one. You just make sure you give us a symbol or something because... <laughs> I can't hear it. So I don't know what that sounds like. <laughs> we're gonna hold. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> hold off on that. Invite me back. One hundred percent. If you must. One hundred percent. I can't wait to talk to you again. Yes. In, Talking on and not, off. Like, let's make sure you sh- um, yes. share our information. We're exchanging contacts. Yeah. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm, sure. I'm gonna put it in Scan your phone. Scan my QR code. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna write it down because you might eat it. So. Yeah, <laughs> don't want. I like that. Uh, do you? Do you, yeah. do you have? Do you all have something you want to ask? Um, uh, yeah. First, no. one more. Did you say your favorite? You movie? did not. Good memory. Mm. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Mm. Hey, that's a real good one. It was the first movie I ever bought on DVD. I saw it on TV, and I just really loved it. I, I the the message of the movie just really spoke to me. I don't know. It was. To see a guy that was innocent of the crime and just, I love really intelligent, quiet people because you don't know what's going on inside their head. And he, it was just such a good movie. It was so oh, like realistic and just mystery and the, and the, like you didn't know what was going to happen until it happened. And it was cool to see the jail culture. I don't know. Yeah. It was just a really good movie to it's me. an excellent film. Yeah, I really liked it. And then uh, what's uh, Morgan F- Freeman? Morgan Freeman. He's His character's one of my... name is Red in the movie, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just, he's one of my favorite actors. His voice, <coughs> iconic. Just just iconic. Mm-hmm. So unique. And yeah, I don't know. I just really liked that movie. And then it was my favorite ever since. And he's in The Dark Knight. Yeah, he is. is. Yeah. Morgan Freeman We're going to Kevin Bacon this. We got to get to Kevin Bacon now. The, oh, yeah. What is it called? The uh, seven, is it seven degrees of yeah, Kevin seven Bacon? seven degrees of Kevin, Kevin Bacon. We're, we're finding out a six lot of... Six, maybe? Is it six it might or seven? Be less. Yeah, Yo, you oh, could Google okay. it. Yeah. Sean's over here sitting on the computer like, I wonder, I wonder what's <laughs> it. You're the freaking Google man. <laughs> Just Google it, bro. I need that second screen. It would <laughs> be so much easier. Yeah. You need get to, him plugged in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we are, Seven degrees we, of Bacon. Give him what he needs. So this is only... Um, podcast number two like this really was like yeah. the mics the way with the cameras yeah like the first two i did were audio only because i i bought a crappy camera that didn't record and then the second two were one mic in the center with my iphone for the video and then you're doing this yeah like then that, now we're up to this you yeah. guys are rocking it i'm very proud of you thank you keep it Thanks, going man. just giving people space to speak and think that's huge like i said it's it's a little bit selfish for me. Like I'm having the time of my life right now. Yeah. I, I get yeah. to talk to my great friends. Like, you don't need so a coffee cool. nor an alcoholic beverage. No, none of us do. This Our phones me. aren't out. No, this is. It's sad that this is old school. This is, is. This is. That's this. The yeah. thing. But this is. So I, I was. I said this in another podcast that we need sunlight. We need water. We need food. We need exercise. I think humans, not just like need, it's required as a human being to socialize. And when mm-hmm. I say socialize, not just be around each other, not just play sports, not just this, not be on your phone, like this, like a really deep conversation where you can just you feel like going off on a tangent. You can go off on a tangent. You want to talk about deep stuff? You can talk about deep stuff. You want to start screaming? Start screaming. Uh, you, we, you want, our guests wouldn't like yeah, that, but I'll turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just this is required for human beings. And I think the reason we're having hot take the shootings and all this stuff like mental health is such a big thing because we don't have this we don't have the porch shits we don't have the no distractions no phones we don't have we don't have it anymore yeah we need to be able to just this like yeah. how great is this that's how i love it it's for so sure great. yeah you know do you know that cartoon meme it's just like this little cartoon dog and it says like everything's fine and he's with the house fire. on fire yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. i think of that every time someone asks me like Hey, how are you? <laughs> and a quick response most people do, including myself, for 
almost my whole life is like I'm okay, yeah. and I'm I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. No, it's I've, okay. It's okay to be like I'm not doing so well, but thanks for asking. I think a lot of us, almost all the time, are not okay. Huh. We're like we have something there, or we're just like we're dealing with something. You know how you say I'm like super literal. Yeah. So when people ask me how you doing, <laughs> I will talk about what's on my mind yeah. every single time. Like. I, you said a lot of great things about mm. um, mental health today, like how your brain on like the board, like all those yeah. lines. The a lot of things you said is exactly how my brain. The works. Charlie yeah. Day, like the the sunny. Yeah, yeah. Like, like smoke I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is exactly where. And my then brain you just find lot, the tools so. and you find the yeah. people and. And see, see I like, like learning this because I don't have that. Exactly, I don't but have like that. hearing I it from it. another person, it's like. Oh, I'm not alone. Like that's yeah. exactly that's going through his head sometimes. That's exactly how I feel sometimes. I'm taking credit for that. That's a win in my you, book. You, you did go. that. Look at you showing off those biceps. I'm going to take Yo. this off yeah, the air with to us, the wide us complimenting each other. I've been, I've been. Thank you. I have been. I've been doing like the push up challenge. Okay. So I've been trying to hit 100 push ups every day. Nice. That's really the only working out I've been doing. You see dramatic changes. It's it actually. Kind of, it kind of blows my that's mind. That's that Matthew McConaughey thing he said in an interview. He just like randomly will drop down, do push ups throughout really? the day. That's how I do Even it. Even in I, the middle of an interview? Awesome. That's how I'll yeah, do it. Yeah, he'll drop just down, awesome. like just I, clear his headspace. Yeah, dude, it, you get, it's just like this talking. I, I'm, like, I'm going to go home with a high. Mm -hmm. I saw those biceps. Um, I am an amateur arm wrestler. I have a professional table in my garage. Get out. We're going to go Metallica Garage do you, Inc. Do you follow um, the, um, the whispering? Yes. That dude's yeah. legit. You're feeling strong, You're feeling Steve. Strong. But then did you see the guy with the really big arms? Yes. He's like super famous. They were they were like talking in, to each other in arms arm wrestler speak. Yeah. Like the, the cusp. The, 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 yeah. you, know, you got it. Yeah, you got it. I'm like, am I watching weird hand sex right now? Like, what the fuck is going on? Because they were There'll like, be a lot of comments here. Like yeah. if you don't see the video yeah. to these sounds yeah. happening you can, right now. That's what I'm saying. If you weren't seeing it, I'm like, Right. What am I watching? I'm gonna. I want to get you guys on the table. It's cool. You'll I'm look in. at it different. I definitely. Won't You're gonna put your hat back. So what do you one thing I've uh, learned from the whispering guy: bicep size has nothing. Like yeah. size has nothing to do with it. It's all technique. No, it's ninety percent. So, yeah, so what do you? They look good. What do you have to like work that. on to be? Uh, you know the hand crunchers. Is that put one a in your car it? every time you're driving? Yeah. Um, yeah I, from technique. what I so yeah, it's, it's more it's, it's forearm countering. than it is like bicep and anything it's, else it's all it's all the arm yeah. but it's it is technique it's like a chess game it's mm -hmm. so good friend of mine Crazy. he's actually a, a silver medalist in left-handed uh pro really wow, so he introduced me smaller he told me in the Yings parking lot he goes mez your arms are so long why don't you arm wrestle and he used to be able to like wrap your hand around my arm and like come on he's like it's you're leverage yes and then here we Makes are sense. yo my cousin shout out to josh he was like a professional arm wrestler in Erie PA. It's a lot mm. bigger than you think. Oh, no, no. It's I'm a lot bigger left -handed than you think. Though. Like, you got to think the competition for left-handed. No, a lot of those guys go left hand just for the yeah. challenge. Oh, he looks training with me because I'm right. They get both of their oh. arms. They, yeah. It is a, it's an entire world. You want to talk about being fascinated by people? That's a whole culture. It's a whole culture. You should, you know what? When you, when you, I know you have a line of people getting on here, but at, you should get Adam on here. He is a, I'd love to. He is a uh, professor of economics. Oh. And he does professional eating challenges, and he's a silver medalist in arm wrestling. So you so, want interesting? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of close out with this. I would love to have people on that I have never met before, but I don't know. I mean, I would assume the conversation would go good, but I I, I can't wait to I have my on first with guest. Mez, you know what I mean? Have two oh, people yeah, on. I could you know do what that. I mean? Yeah, do the yeah. same thing. Although that I do want to eventually get to the point where I have like a random person right. that could come on because I do want to. One of my things is. And we didn't get to talk about it, but it'll be in episode two is um, local business owners. Mm. I want local business owners to come on this show because like it's a thing. And then they tell a little bit about their local business. Yes. And then you get to learn about the actual person, not just the business. Like They get to advertise their business, but then you get to learn about them. I, I like that. that. I like you that know? a lot. Yeah, that's my next. That's my next. That's you. I like that a lot. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Seven o'clock, baby. We made it. Uh Guest number nine, Mark Mez. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Bye.